Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome to Marriage and the Single Lady. I'm your Bible study teacher, Zandra Wilson. And this is workshop series number 14, class number one. I'm so excited. Guys, I hope you enjoyed um, the weekend. Uh, I hope you're staying safe. Um, I hope you're eating healthy, exercising, studying your scriptures, and getting along with your spouse or your significant other, I should say. I'm so excited to be back. I took a couple of weeks off to kind of just relax and kind of just spend some time um, with myself and in prayer and to see what God would have of me to teach going forward. So after much prayer, and guys, I'm so excited that we finished Restoration. I am, this book, oh my gosh, if you guys have not gotten a copy, definitely get your copy. It's a year-long journal. It's dedicated to my mom, which um, she passed seven years ago. And it's a journey of faith in obtaining and restoring godly relationships. Um, it's exercises every single day for you to do, and it's, bottom line, it's designed for you to grow stronger with Christ in the meantime, while you're growing stronger with Christ, you're developing stronger and more intimate relationships with significant others and restoring some bad relationships. So um, that book um, God gave to me going well, on two years ago now, um, it's scripture. Like I said, it's daily journaling, some exercises for you to do. And at the end of the year, after the 52 weeks, you really should be stronger with your walk with God. And it's, a, it's something that you can do yearly. Like you can start right back over again and um, redo all of, the, all of the lessons. So it's a journal that keeps on giving. So again, this is restoration. It's the journey of faith and obtaining and restoring godly relationships. You can get it on Amazon. It's free on Amazon Prime. You can go on my website and get a copy. Blue Skincare, B-L-U with no E. B-L-U skincare.info. Again, black owned business. Yay! So um, support me, of course. Um, Blue Skin Care, as you know, I um, I um, have um, skincare products as well. So the the book is really, um, it's really interesting. You can go and read some of the comments that people have made. And also um, just, you know, read a little bit of it for yourself. And um, it, you really would be blessed. You really would be blessed. So let's get started. I want to make sure I keep you on time. Today's lesson is ways to stay romantic during the quarantine. We don't know how long we're going to be here in this quarantine. We need to make the most of it. Um, some of us, it's not good for, especially for us extroverts. The introverts are doing pretty good, but it's us extroverts that may be having a hard time. So this is the time where we really need to buckle down and study scripture and, and allow the Lord to speak to our hearts. So let's bow with a word of prayer, then we'll get right into it. Well, Father God, I thank you for once again allowing me to be able to teach this class. Father God, it's such joy to be able to come together and to be able to teach this class in the name of Jesus, Father God. I just ask God that you remove me and just allow your spirit to speak through me, God. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for the, the, the scripture that you've given me, the, the lessons. Father God, over these past four years, it's been just such an amazing blessing. I cannot believe that a minister, Joanne Sims, and myself have been doing this all the way through Workshop 14, God. I, I thank you for her. I thank you for her ministry that she has in His Will Ministries, Father God, and how she's blessing her flock over there. So God, I just ask that the hearers of this lesson tonight don't just hear what I teach, God, but they go out and they actually do the work. So, Father, I thank you, Lord. I lift all of these things up to you in the mighty and the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So let's get started. Okay, so what can we do, right, um, during this quarantine time? The news says that today, 3 billion of us out of 7.8 billion people are in quarantine. That's a lot of people. 3 billion are on lockdown around the world. Many are practicing self-quarantine while others are disregarding the guidance from the federal government and the Centers for Disease Control, CDC in Atlanta. There are two fears, getting sick and getting someone else sick. And as we know, guys, um, lately the, the um, corona, uh, COVID-19, coronavirus, whatever you want to call it, the, the cases are spiking um, here in California. They are afraid that they may run out of ventilators and hospital beds, which means you're going to have an increase in deaths. 
So this is why this test lesson is so timely. Um, the government of the world are quarantining healthy people. What should we think about? Why is this so important? It is very, very important for us to take this serious. And they did this back in biblical times. That's what we're going to talk about tonight. So for all of you Christians, and this is the thing, a lot of us conservative Christians are the ones that don't want to wear the mask, that don't want to quarantine, that think it's a hoax. Let's see what they did in the Bible, in biblical times. It's, it's amazing that some of us feel this way. The word of God is a wonderful guide, even if these things are happening, right? It speaks clearly in general principles about quarantine. The medical community roughly follows them today. Now, some historians contend the procedures of cleanliness and quarantine first appeared in the Bible. We're going to talk about that. Let's survey the biblical principles of quarantine. Love your neighbor. The reason why we as Christians... Even if we felt like, I don't even know how we can even justify not quarantining, but I always use this, even when this, when all of this first started, because I'm a very, I'm a very healthy person. God has really blessed me with being very healthy and I very rarely get sick. However, I do know I can get sick. And I do know that although my faith is believing that I will be healed, believing that God is going to um, do what he's going to do, whether he does it or not. I can get sick and God can call me home. I still would believe that he can heal me. That's Zandra's faith. My sister or my brother may not have that faith. So for me to get sick and then to go around them and get them sick, they may not have that same faith that I have in regards to healing. Just because I, I have such amazing faith doesn't mean that I may not get sick. Doesn't mean that I may not get sick. There's so many people who are on fire for the Lord, love God, love Jesus, that die every day. They die every single day believing. Um, and, you know, the, the writer of Hebrews talk about that. How many times, you know, these promises of God that a lot of people, including Moses, the promises they believed, it, they didn't see it. But he believed it and they passed on. So it's the same with us. It's about loving our neighbor. So when you love your neighbor, you're going to do everything in your power to help them. You don't want to see them sick. You may heal and then you kill them. And that's happened. That has happened where someone was sick, got someone else sick. They recovered. The person that they got sick did not. So loving our neighbors and the pre preservation of life is at the heart of the biblical quarantine laws the applications are rooted in leviticus 19 18 let's go there do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against anyone among your people but love your neighbor as yourself i am the lord and the sixth commandment thou shalt not shalt not kill so the second portion of that is love your neighbor every law of god is a law of love including the quarantine laws there are a variety of plagues and mitigation procedures addressed in these laws. So we can go to the scriptures. You know, I love the scriptures. We're gonna, it's a bunch of them here. Let's start first. Um, I'm not, not going to read um, all of Leviticus 13 through 15. So you can read that for yourself. Let's turn to Numbers. It's all through the Old Testament, guys, about quarantining. I don't even, you know, but just so you know that it is in scripture. Let's turn to Numbers 5, verses 1 through 4. And I'll just read... Um, couple of verses here. This is dealing with quarantine. <clears throat> the Lord said to Moses, command the Israelites to send away from the camp anyone who has an infection, skin disease, or discharge of any kind, or who is ceremonially unclean because of a dead body. Send away male and female alike. Send them outside the camp so they will not defile their camp where I dwell among them. Let the, Israelite, um, the Israelites did this. They sent them away outside the camp. They did just as the Lord had instructed Moses. Okay, that was Numbers 5, 1 through 4. Let's go to Numbers um, 19 uh, through 20. Let's see what that says. I mean, I'll just read a couple. It's all through. You can Google. It's so many... Um, this may be, let me see, the whole chapter. Okay, we'll read 1920. Um, uh, da, 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 da. But if a person who is unclean does not purify himself, he must be cut off from the community because he has defiled the sanctuary of the Lord. The water of cleansing has not been sprinkled on him and he is unclean. 
And I'll just read one more. Um, this is, let me go to Deuteronomy 23, 10 through 13. So, my Bible, if it doesn't fall apart. Let's go to Deuteronomy. Ah. You know, Deuteronomy is the laws. Talk about those laws. My Bible is in shambles, guys, but um, it's okay. So, Deuteronomy 23. And I'm just going to read verses 10 through 14. If one of your men is unclean because of a nocturnal emission, so that's basically a, a wet dream, right? He is to go outside the camp and stay there. But as evening approaches, he is to wash himself and at sunset, he must return to the camp. Designate a place outside the camp where you can go to relieve yourself. As part of your equipment, have something to dig with. And when you relieve yourself, dig a hole and cover up your excrement. Okay? For the Lord your God moves about in your camp to protect you and to deliver your enemies to you. So basically, what God, he, they, were, they were quarantining even back during the Old Testament days. So guys, you can go to Leviticus and read chapters 13 through 15. I just read Numbers 5, 1 through 4, Numbers 19, verse 20. And you can go and read Numbers 31, verses 11 through 20. So I'm not going to read all of these scriptures to you, but quarantining, they did it back in biblical times. And it was just to protect those that they love. So it's loving your neighbor. The second one is Chronicles 26, 16 through 21, 2 Kings 15, 5. Think biblically about quarantine. The laws of Moses for quarantine refer to situations in Israel that have changed. There are, however, abiding principles for us to apply today. They are often called case laws. They examine different kinds of cases, real life situations, right? These cases are representative of the general types of situations you might encounter. The specific incidents reveal the wisdom of God. They help us to know how to respond to categories of real life situations. Okay, so being home with our loved one, right? All day, every day can feel unnatural. It doesn't feel right. No matter how deep our God-given love runs, it just doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel right. Suddenly, there's no outside entertainment, no friends to socialize with, no activities to share, and the list goes on. So the bottom line is that we get tired of being stuck in the house, and then we just go out. We got to get out of here. I got to go. And it doesn't mean that you can't go out. Just have your mask and your gloves on and to stay six feet. They're, they are giving us um, a little bit of headway. They could say, just stay in the house, period, right? Um, but we do have some headway. Um, and this, this time guys, as Christians, this is a time, this is a reboot. 2020 is a reboot. 2020 vision this year, it just keeps on. It's the year that keeps on giving. It's a reboot. You have so much time. <clears throat> Many of you have so much time that you can spend in prayer and Bible study. Are you studying your Bible? What are you doing during, during your quarantine time? You have a lot of time. So what are you doing with your time? Are we sitting around eating and just gaining weight? Are we exercising? What are, we, what are you doing? You should be, it's like God just giving us time to get better. It's almost like we were sick and God is like, I'm gonna give you like a whole year to get better. And so during this time, we should be in prayer. We should be in, you know, supplicating, just um, studying our word, meditating, um, worshiping. We're, we're not leaving the house. We, we, we've gotten so many extra hours per day because we don't have to necessarily um, get up and get dressed as we normally would to go to work or go to church or whatever. We have so much extra time. What are you doing with that time? Okay, so what we're going to talk about over the next couple of minutes is what you can do while you're in the house with your loved one. Okay, so Marriage and the Single Lady is a group that's designed to prepare single women for marriage. We have a lot of married women and men, actually, that's a part of this group. So the bottom line is what are we doing while we're in quarantine? Are we upset? Are we not? Um, it's like, what, how is your, is your relationship getting stronger? Is it getting weaker? What's going on? So let's talk about it. One of the things that you can do, and I just read, with you, read for you, that quarantining, they did it. In the Old Testament, they did it. So if so, and then it's common sense. So we know we need to do it. 
So while we're doing it, so Lord, what can I do to make this the best of this? So that's what this lesson is about today. What can I do to make the best of this? I'm stuck in the house with my husband. The first thing you could do is pray together. How many times have he been too busy or you've been too busy getting up, running, going to work? You can't. Why are you not? Why are you not praying together? You can't say you don't have the time. You can't say you don't know. Why are you not praying together? So I'm trusting and believing that you are praying together. There's almost nothing more bonding than praying with your spouse. Many friends have agreed their husbands could eat every last ounce of precious guacamole or fall asleep on the couch midday. But one glance at that bald head, we're mush. So the bottom line is that during this time, you can be praying together. If you're not praying together, what are you doing? You have all of this extra time. The first thing, if it's the first thing in the morning, if it's at night, whenever, you should be praying together every single day. Because none of us know how any of this is going to end. We kind of have, have an idea of what we think. No one knows. I mean, no one. I mean, everyone is sitting around scratching their heads. They have no clue. So in the meantime, you should be praying with your spouse and asking God for direction. Lord, so we, since no one knows what we should be doing, Lord, what are we to do? What do you want me and my husband to do? So that's something that the first thing that you should be doing that will help grow your relationship is prayer, being in prayer together. Number two, have creative date nights, right? So it, it may feel ridiculous meeting your husband down in the living room, dressed up, with makeup on, hair done, evening gown, and he with a suit and tie or whatever. But you gotta, you know, make it, Fun or festive. You can even decorate the backyard if you have a, a backyard or a patio or something. But just make it fun and festive. And, you know, have the kids lock them upstairs in the room with a babysitter or an older child, kid, or whatever. Um, but have fun date nights. Full cooked meals, you know. Um, you can even hire somebody to come over. I mean, because people now are trying to, um, you know, we're still trying to uh, make money and work. Um, do your social distancing. But have fun date nights. And just plan out your date night. Maybe it's dinner. Then after that, you're going to watch a movie. Then after that, you know, whatever, you know, uh, God puts on your heart. But just make it fun where you j decorate the place really nice. Like, you know, you may not nor normally do that. You may just eat in the living room or whatever. But maybe decorate the little patio or the dining area or wherever you, you eat really nice. Dress up and go down and have a nice meal. You have the time. You, have, you know what I'm saying? So these are things you can do to make your um, time together more fun and creative. So praying together, and God will guide you in your prayer. you asking God, so what is it that we can do? So have creative date nights. Number three, find a show you both love. <clears throat> One of the things we've gotten into the habit of is you in your room watching whatever you like. He's in his room watching whatever he like. And you're not spending any quality time together. So find something um, that you both enjoy a program binge watch um, whatever you know what I'm saying there's so many free platforms from Hulu you can get 30 days free Netflix or whatever um, you know there's I think it's Tubi T-U-B-I TV um, dot com that has free movies so you can binge watch horror movies or whatever you both like binge watch romantic movies binge watch Western, something that you both enjoy and uninterrupted binge watch and just enjoy the time together. So it has to be something that both of you enjoy. Okay. Cook together. Um, many times either the, the girl don't want to cook or the guy doesn't like to cook, but maybe find something creative. We have all of this extra time, um, where you can come up with some creative meals and just cook a nice, do a seven course meal. When was the last time outside of a, a wedding reception or some type of function where you've actually had like a seven course meal, five course meal or whatever. Decorate that table up, honey. Like get the table looking really nice and just create, just sit down and create, like, let's just have a really nice five course meal and, and make it together. Create it together. You know, um, just even if it's just once. Just get, get it together and just cook together with the kids or whomever and then sit down and just have a meal that you bought. I mean, when was the last time you guys have done that together? 
so you can create a meal. Make homemade pizza. Doesn't have to be a seven course meal. It could be like, okay, hey, let's get together and make a homemade pizza. Or maybe barbecue. A lot of the uh, men love to barbecue. Uh, maybe he hits the grill and you're learning some stuff. Things that you can do together. Just It's a learning experience. To le and you learn so much about a person when you see them in their natural habitat or their element. So these are just fun things that you can do to make the time together fun. Take a drive. You guys can just go out. I mean, even if you got to go to Costco, man, get out and go together. Just even if it's just to walk around and look at stuff, fantasize together. Maybe after this quarantine or this pandemic is over, you guys were thinking about buying a home. That's my thing. I want to buy myself a duplex or triplex. So you can go online and, you know, go to Lowe's, you know, um, and go through Lowe's and kind of look at toilets or granite or you know uh, go to floor decor and look at granite or or go, you know look at roofing just whatever just you know like this is what just fantasize together you may not have a dime right now you may not have any money but believing and trusting that god is going to turn it around and plan it that's why people have vision boards so you have your vision board as to what you want so when the money starts coming through you already got you you don't have to plan nothing it's already been planned and you have the time now to do it. So you just plan everything out. Like, this is what we would like. You know, like um, I have the lady that I, I, I live with, before she got her condo, um, she told the Lord what she would like. She was one of the three bedroom, I think three bedroom, two bath condo. And she told him the area. She saw it in the penny saver. She, was, she didn't have a dime. She had nothing. Man, she had already planned it out before. She saw it in the penny saver. Penny saver. She just so happened to be looking through a penny saver. That's what I'm saying. She played, She had it laid out. So do that. This is the fun time. Like the colors you would want in your bedroom. And the kind of sheets you would buy. Or, you know, how you want your, um, the pillows that you would want. Or the mattress that you want. You will have your budget set. Like, um, it's so much you could do right now during all this. And it's fun. These, these things are less, they're not stressful and there's so much fun that you could do with your spouse. You're dreaming together, whatever it is. It may not be buying a house. It may be a vacation. You know, like my niece and I, we would travel to these different exotic spaces every year. So we would go and, you know, we wanted to do Egypt. So we went and looked and, you know, and just had, this is where we wanted to go. Then it was Jerusalem. This is where we wanted to go. And so we just kind of went and just found places and just put our package together. But if my point is that if we just waited to the last minute, we wouldn't have known. It would have been too much work. You know what I'm saying? It would have been way too much to do. So do all that stuff now. That's the fun stuff. And take a drive. Drive up. And we're in California. You can drive up PCH, Pacific Coast Highway. Um, there's so many different places you can go. Like I said, even if it's the Costco's. Just get out and just go. And just cap your mask on. You know, and just go. And just get out of the house together. It just it makes it so much fun just to gather, to get out. Number six, still attempt to miss each other. You're like, Zandra, how am I going to miss this person? This is when you set date nights or you just kind of go in your little round. Because we all separate anyway, right? So you may be in your office. He may be in his office. But make a point to, to miss him, right? Um, you don't have to be up under. That's why you have the date nights and you're doing all these little activities together. You don't want to be up under him 24-7. You still have women. We still have some personal things that we're doing. We have a personal prayer, personal worship. You know, you have your own life. Um, this is where I then, I love doing the personal me time. So I would then need to work on incorporating my future husband into my life. Where some people, they're really, really uh, uh, joined at the hip. That's not naturally how I am. So, you know, so that this part would be easy for me. So just make missing each other. So that means you have your own life and your own things going on. He's a part of it, but you still are an individual person. Whatever it is, it may be you're exercising. Um, you may choose to do by yourself. And maybe maybe he want to do his exercising by himself or your scripture reading or whatever. Or some programs you want to watch. Just some things you want to do um, that you want for yourself. And then you guys come together, like I said, just to, um, that's why so many people in quarantine are just like going crazy and they're really, cause they're just around each other. In some places you have like this small apartment, I get it, but you want some me time. 
Women tend to understand this more. You just want some me time. So you want to make sure that you um, try to miss each other. So send each other sappy texts. You know what I'm saying? Love texts, whatever. You guys float your boat. You know, the I love yous or the, the emojis or whatever. You know, you want to send that to your significant other. And number seven, get outside together. We just talked about that. Nothing about nature, reset, just getting out, looking at nature. If you're sitting outside on your patio, just bird watching or, or, or looking out at people watching, whatever. Just kind of get outside um, and just kind of watch and just see who are your neighbors. Do you know your neighbors? You know what I'm saying? Do you, who, do you, who do you know this on your street? It's a good time to say hello to people and kind of get out. And finally, number eight, big picture it. We all feel more stressed during the quarantine season, but we can try minimizing the tension it brings into our homes. When we're frustrated with each other, try not to sweat the little things. Some of the stuff that we're mad at, we're, we're just mad because we're stuck in a house together. And then that then breeds us being mad about something else. So don't sweat the small stuff. You know, if he's leaving the toilet seat up or the toothpaste cap off, um... Or for, for you brothers, if she's um, talking too much or what, some of this stuff just is just not even a big deal. You know what I'm saying? Don't sweat the small stuff. So just kind of pray and ask God for guidance, direction, for patience. Um, that's why you kind of need uh, with ladies when you have your own life and your husband is a part of that life, but you have your own, your husband's. Men, you have your own life and your wife is a part of that, right? It's not that you're separate per se, but you kind of got your own thing going on. You got your girlfriends that you're hanging with. You got your whatever, right? Um, you, even though during quarantine, we can't necessarily be around. They're not recommending that we be around friends, just family. But you can still do FaceTime. Thank God that we have FaceTime. We have Zoom. We can do, you can be on Zoom for hours, you know, or FaceTiming for hours. So there's so much that we could do that. Thank God we have this kind of stuff. Because suppose, just a couple of years ago, we didn't have any of this stuff. Man, I just think that's something to just thank God for, right? If we have our health and each other, there's so much to be thankful for. And we'll be thanking Jesus soon enough for romance and adventure that we have experienced. So again, guys, um, we know that quarantining is biblical. You know, so a lot of us, you know, especially as Christians, it's mostly us, not the liberals, not even more so than the moderates. The liberals and the moderates, they all for it. They're, they're wearing their masks. They are social dis distancing. They understand it. It's the conservative Christians um, and most evangelical Christians, I should say. But I'll just say conservative Christians that have a problem with this. Um, so it's going back to loving our neighbors. You know, you may not like the, the um, situation as far as wearing a mask, but you you know enough that you can get sick and that you can possibly infect someone else. And that goes by loving. That's why we, you know, we need to love our neighbors. And it is uncomfortable having a mask on all day and no one wants to do it. I don't like doing it. No one wants to do it. But it, it means protecting my sister or my brother or a family member whom I love, who I say I love, I'm just going to do it. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to, I'm just, I'm going to do the best that I can. So that's why with all that's going on, if we're showing love, which is what the whole Bible is about. Jesus's whole ministry coming here. It's about love and salvation, clearly for us to, um, saving us and getting us to heaven, but it's love, love thy neighbor, love thy God with all thy heart. We know the commandments. Um, and then love thy neighbor as ourselves, just those two. So if you love your neighbor, you're going to wear your mask. Because you know that you can get sick and you know that you could possibly infect someone. You know that. Common sense will tell you that. Whether you have um, symptoms or not. Like the Atlanta mayor, she just tested positive for COVID. She had no symptoms. No symptoms. And with her being positive for COVID, she, can, she has children. So let's just keep that in mind. Again, go and read Leviticus 13 through 15, Numbers 5, 4, Numbers 5, 1 through 4, Numbers 19 and 20, Numbers 31, 11 through 20, Deuteronomy 23, 10 through 14, 2 Kings 7, 3 and 4, 2 Chronicles 26, 16 through 21, and 2 Kings 15, 5. Okay, think biblically about the quarantine. So let me just real quick, 
Number one, what you can do is pray together. Okay, number two, have creative date nights. Things you can do. Number three, find a show that you both love, that you can both watch and enjoy. Four, cook something together, something exotic, something you never had before, or something simple. Number five, take a drive. Just take a drive down PCH or wherever. Still attempt to miss each other, number six. Send each other text messages or emojis or just try your best to just miss the person. If that whole day you got to spend apart, maybe you in one part of the house, he's in the other or whatever. Just try to make an attempt so it's, you know, how you guys know what I'm saying. When you miss someone, you know, um, it just makes the heart grow fonder for the person. Get outside together. So that's going back to taking a drive. But if you can only go outside and sit on your front porch, that's something that you can do together. And number eight, stop sweating the small stuff. Some of the stuff that we're mad about, yelling about, it's just not that serious. It really is not that serious. So, okay, that's my lesson for today. Hi, Hope. I'm hoping that you enjoyed the lesson for today. So if you have any questions, definitely hit me up in the comment section. If there are any classes that you would like for me to teach or any subject matters that you would like for me to touch on, I definitely would do it. If you want to co-teach, I love having people come in and co-teach with me. If they have something that they're um, very passionate about that they want to show and share with someone else. Okay, so let's bow for a word of prayer. So, Father God, I thank you again for this lesson tonight, Father God, quarantining with a loved one, God, and just touching people's heart to know that this is biblical. This is biblical to stay away when there's sickness in the land, Father God. You know, according to reports, one in 140 Angelinos are infected. And Father God, I love my neighbors enough that I don't want to get anyone sick. And I'm sure most of the, uh, our, not, you know, our Christian sisters and brothers feel the same way. So God, I just ask that you touch our hearts during the times when we want to um, not wear our mask or, or wear our gloves or whatever, God, that we stop and think, Lord, about what it could possibly do to someone that we love. So Father God, I thank you for this time of, of um, prayer. I thank you for this lesson tonight. I thank you for all that you're doing. I thank you for this group. I thank you for the YouTube family who's going to view this in a few minutes on YouTube, God, and, and the pleasure and the, uh, the blessings that you brought me from that group of people. I thank you, God. I lift all of this up to you in the matchless and the beautiful name of Jesus Christ. God, I just pray that everything tonight, God, that it touched their hearts and that they're not just listeners, but they're doers. I lift this up to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay. All right. Thanks, Hope. Okay, bye-bye.